Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to talk about GitHub and Cloud9. So these are the two websites that actually work together very well. So just so, you, so we're clear what they are, um, GitHub is basically um, a free website that you can use to host repositories, which are basically big huge folders that you can put lots of codes in. You can do all sorts of programming here, um, any language you want, any code you want. So Cloud9 is a place for you to develop and type in the code. So you're going to actually do your coding here. And then once you want to publish them or push them and commit them to GitHub, we're going to do that so that they're saved online. So basically, Cloud9 allows us to run and test code and write code. But um, it doesn't allow us to save uh, our code. Well, it actually does allow you to save it temporarily. but. Um, if we want to publish a web page, which is what we're going to use it for, we're going to have to use a web host, and GitHub allows you to, to do that for free. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to sign in, and make sure you use your at redlandschools.net. Um, and once you've done that, if you haven't done this before, I know that we did this, some of, you, some of us did this the first day of school, but if you haven't done this before, the first thing you're going to have to do is verify your email. So you'll have to go to your email. Actually, this one will be go to Gmail because I'm logged into my Google account. Um, and if you haven't verified it, it won't let you access it. Okay. Um, do the same thing for Cloud9. Um, you can sign in this way, but you should actually have received an email from me inviting you to join our team. Otherwise, you'll have to create an account using a um, using a credit card. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to send you an email, and you're going to you're going to create that so that you'll already have an account set up. So then you'll just be able to sign in. You'll notice there's a button right here that says log in with GitHub. So once you've connected the two, you can do that. Okay, for now I'm just going to click regular sign in, and I'm going to put in my hold on a second here. Okay, sorry about that. I had to uh, log in, so let me just sign out real quick. But I had to log in and clean up my workspace so that it was blank. So um, basically, I just entered my email and password, and this is what you'll see when you log in. I wanted to delete all the other stuff so you don't you don't see anything different than I do. So basically, here's how it works. You should be a member of my team. So this is where we are. So project. Um, these are all our stuff that we'll have, and you can see people have already started adding stuff. So that's cool. Um, so basically, what's going to happen is <clears throat> once you get here, what you're going to do is you're going to click on repositories, and this will basically you see this. You'll have a you'll see it'll say connect to GitHub. So I've already done that. So you'll click connect to GitHub, and it will load any repositories that you have on GitHub. So what's a repository again? Okay, so let me go back to GitHub, and I'm going to put new, and I'm going to call this. Um, training video okay and I'm going to say just for I'm just going to make this and then you can initialize it with a readme if you want but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it this way because I like it when you don't initialize with a readme it will give you these list of commands so this these commands right here you're going to want to use and, and actually you don't need to do this when we're using cloud nine because they'll just have a button you can just click on so let's see if we um, can refresh it see if it oh I haven't created it yet maybe I haven't it's loading okay so there it is so it just popped up so now we have another video uh, sorry, <laughs> another repository. And there's nothing in this repository. So let me just show you here. Um, on Mr. Tho's, if I look at this repository, there's nothing in it. So this is like actually an empty repository. So there's no actual files in here or, or anything. So let me go back to um, Cloud9, and I'm going to go ahead and clone it, though, even though there's nothing here. Now I'm going to have to make a word again. So I'll call it training video. And just for just to show my students, and we're gonna go ahead and make it a web page. And you can see here's where it gets the clone. So this is you don't have to type this in because they've done that for me. 
and you're going to go ahead and click work create workspace and this is where it actually develops it creates the environment for you to make some programs I know it seems like a lot of hassle they're actually really cool once you figure out how it actually works um, what's happening is these two work these two are working together and they, they communicate through the web and it allows you to basically do all this programming without downloading any software or anything okay so I actually asked it to be HTML so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's add a new file and it's untitled but I'll save it in a second but I'm just going to do HTML HTML and I'll just go hi and I'll put that in the paragraph tag so let's just pretend I was making a web page now it doesn't recognize it. I can't preview it until I've saved it at something so I'll just go call it index.html which is pretty much how we always name our home pages for a website so that's just why I chose that you can see that the colors change slightly that because it now recognizes what type of language it's in and so it's going to actually help me out so if I wanted to write another paragraph like this you see it already completes the tag for me cool so it's actually going to help me because this is a text editor right here okay this right here is the branch that kind of shows you where my video so this is the, the the repository this is the file and this is what it looks like okay now I can do control s save it and then I can live preview and this is what it would look like if I published this on the web but not, 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 not all that cool but um, let me show you now what you can do so I'll just move this off to the side so let's grab some images from another folder so let's say I had some images so I have this image right here of me paragliding at Torrey Pines and let's say I want to drag that and put that here I'm going to copy that into the training video repository see that popped up right there it's as easy as that and now I can add an image hold on one second I gotta so let's say I want to add this image to my web page. I can go ahead and type image tag and then the source. And let's say it's 0.jpg. Okay. And then you see how this dots here? That means I got to save it. So go ahead and control S. That goes away. Now I know it's saved. I can just refresh it and see what it looks like. And so there's the image. Whoa, it's pretty big. There I am, <laughs> taking up the entire web page. So maybe I want to change the size. So let's go to um, height. And we'll just make it 50% there so that's 50 pixels this is 50% and you can see what's cool about this is it's showing me what my web page looks like before I commit all these changes to to github now if you come back to github and I look at my repositories you're gonna notice that this repository doesn't have any bytes in it I meaning it has no information there's not zero bytes I mean there's nothing in here so obviously this isn't really working the way I want it to that's what this is this is called the bash window so this is the command line where I can actually run through a series of um, commands. Now these commands, you're going to like freak out at first because it's like I'm going to type in a whole bunch of stuff you don't know yet unless you've done this. But these are where they all come from. So git is a program that you can run remotely. You can run it in bash. And basically these are the commands I'm going to type. Now I don't actually have to do this one. But I'm going to go ahead and do it just to see what happens because it doesn't really matter. But, oh, and by the way, you can't do paste. You see that? You have to use control V. So I just use control V instead. And it says fatal remote origin already exists. If you remember when I did this initially, I pushed clone from. So it already cloned, which is the same thing as adding. So I don't have to actually do that. So instead, I'm just going to type git. Well, let's just type git status this basically just says what's happened so when I type git space status 
it's going to tell me what I've done. I've added two files, it even tells me. So that's cool. So then we want to go ahead and make those changes and we're going to add those by pushing git space add space dot. Now watch what happens when I t type in git status to check the status on it. Now it says, okay, you have new file. So basically these were the changes I made here, but they hadn't been committed to the branch. Okay. Now I've added those commits. I'm sorry, I've added those files to those to the um, branch, but they need to be committed. Okay, if I want to get rid of them, I can remove them. But instead, I'm going to commit them. So how do I do that? Pretty simple. You type in commit. Now, one thing you do need to do is you need to leave a message when you make a commit. I found that it won't. I don't know. Maybe this isn't true, but I found that when you don't leave this message, it won't commit. So I'm going to say added index and a picture. Okay, so now once you've committed it, it'll tell you, great, everything is done. We've got six insertions. That's because of these lines of code right there. We've got two different files changed. Created this file and created this picture. Bam. Now, all I have to do now is push. Git push. Now, when you do this the first time, it's going to make you log in, I think. I'm not 100% sure because we're already connected. But it might ask you to log in to your GitHub account. So that's fine. If you mess up, you can just do it over again. Now, I want to also run you through. You can't see this, but these are the up arrows and down arrows on my keyboard. If you go through these, it remembers all the stuff you, it scrolls through all the stuff you've typed before. So you don't need to worry about, if I go through and say, oh, actually, you know what? I want to make it a little bigger. I want to make it like there. Now, now that looks better. Well, guess what? You got to go through and look now it's changed so you got to go through and add it so just scroll to it then go ahead and commit then go ahead and push so it doesn't take you you don't have to keep typing all that stuff you just basically have to use the up arrow and remember which one to go in order and I'll help you with that okay so now let's go back to github and now we're gonna take a look at the training video look oh my gosh there's a red dot here and we can open this now and look boom and there it is so what's cool about this this is where my actual repository is being stored and ultimately published in case you're wondering I do have um, my own website hosted at github so if you look at my actual website look there's what it looks like so you actually have a way you can host websites and you can you can use that to this is what we're going to basically be doing. You guys are going to be using this to host all of your assignments and you're going to be uploading them to a web page. So for today, we're just going to get you guys going. You're going to get linked in with these two and then boom, the magic can start. All right, man, guys, girls, people, talk to you later.